Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, my name is Christopher Prey. I'm the Natural Resources Manager here at West Point, also the Acting uh, National Environmental Policy Act Coordinator. Um, thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. Uh, on behalf of Colonel Evangeline Roselle, the Garrison Commander, I'd like to welcome you to this teleconference, virtual public scoping meeting, uh, for the Environmental Impact Statement, also known as a EIS, being prepared for the implementation of the Clinton District Area Development Plan at the U.S. Army Garrison West Point. Uh, this is our first public scoping meeting. A second one will be held later today at 6 p.m. in the same manner. Uh, these public scoping meetings are the first step in the process of preparing an EIS. We are asking you to listen in and review a basic outline of a proposed master planning document that covers multiple projects and offer a comment on what, those, what environmental impacts we should analyze in the EIS. You will be able to make a verbal comment later on during this meeting, as well as comment in writing if that is your preference. I'd like now to take the opportunity to introduce you to the key staff and subject matter experts that are on the call with us today. Um, Mr. Brett Walker, uh, the Environmental Management Division Chief for West Point. Um, we have Stephanie Shapiro, she's the Master Planner here at West Point. We have Mr. Patrick Raley, he's Culture Resources Manager here at West Point. Uh, Carissa Scarpa, uh, she works with the New York District of Army Corps of Engineers and is the Army's Project Manager on this, on this effort. There are also several st staff members from First Environment and WSP, the contracting team who is helping us prepare the EIS and conduct the public involvement project. I'll now ask uh, Brittany Keim from WSP, who will be our facilitator today, to explain how this meeting is going to be structured. Thank you, Chris, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brittany Keim. I am with WSP, one of the companies contracted by the Army to assist in preparing the EIS and conduct the public involvement portion of the National Environmental Policy Act process. I will be the facilitator for this meeting. As Mr. Prey mentioned, this is the first of two teleconference virtual scoping meetings for the Clinton District Area Development Plan EIS at the U.S. Army Garrison West Point. We are having this teleconference meeting today instead of an in-person meeting in response to the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic in the United States and the Center for Disease Control's recommendations for social distancing and avoiding large public gatherings. A recording of this virtual meeting will also be made available online at the website address that is provided in the newspaper notices and the agency letters that were mailed out. In addition to this meeting, scoping materials for the project are also available at the same website address. To begin, I would first like to go over the structure and some housekeeping items for this teleconference virtual meeting. In a few minutes, Ben Smith from WSP will present an overview of the National Environmental Policy Act and the EIS process. After that, Ms. Stephanie Shapiro, a master planner at West Point, will provide an overview of the Clinton District Area Development Plan. I would like to point out that this is a teleconference meeting and it will be limited to an audio presentation. However, you can follow along with the slides that are being used in the presentation by accessing the website access.live backslash WP Clinton a-D-P-E-I-S. Again, if you're at a computer, you can follow along with the presentation by uh, typing in your browser, access.live backslash WP Clinton, A-D-P-E-I-S. Please note that all lines will be muted during the presentation. Once the presentation is completed, we will open the lines to receive comments and they will remain open until 4 p.m. At that time, I will call on everyone who wishes to provide a comment by their first name and the last four digits of your phone number, and you will be unmuted to provide your comment. To indicate that you would like to provide a comment, you can press star three at any time during the meeting. Once you've pressed star three, you'll be transferred to an operator and asked to provide your name so we can enter you into the comment queue. During the comment portion of this meeting, when I call on you, your line will be unmuted and your comment will be heard by all callers in the meeting. Please note that your comments will be recorded, transcribed, and as appropriate, addressed and incorporated into the draft EIS. If you wish to provide a written comment during this call, you may do so by typing into the comment box 
at access.live backslash WP Clinton ADP EIS. So that's the same website in which you can stream the presentation. There's a section where you're able to enter a comment in online. Again, that's access.live backslash WP Clinton ADP EIS. Those comments will not be read out loud, but will be included in the formal record. And again, as appropriate, addressed and incorporated into the draft EIS. Outside of today's call, you can also provide comments via email and regular mail to the addresses noted in the newspaper notices and included on the project website. When you arrive at the landing page for the event, you'll be given the option to provide your name and email address. If you're interested in receiving future project updates, please be sure to provide your information here. This is optional and you can choose to close the pop-up without sharing your information. I will go over additional details on commenting once the presentations have concluded. Now I will turn the virtual mic over to Spence Smith from WSP to give an overview of the National Environmental Policy Act and the EIS process. Thank you and good afternoon. As mentioned, my name is Spence Smith and I will elaborate on the purpose for being here tonight by giving, or today, by giving you a brief introduction to the National Environmental Policy Act, also known as NEPA, including scoping, preparation of the draft and final EISs, and the planned timelines associated with each step of the process. Now to the purpose for being here, the NEPA process, which is described on slide four of the presentation if you're following along. The National Environmental Policy Act was signed into law in 1970 with the goal for the federal government to use all practical, practical means to create and maintain conditions under which man and nature can exist in productive harmony. It requires federal agencies to examine their proposed action or actions and what impacts those actions might have on the human environment, which includes natural, cultural, and socioeconomic resources. The law also requires that a federal agency identify all reasonable alternatives to the proposed action. The federal agency is then required to share the results of the impacts analysis with the public. The impacts assessment and sharing of the findings with the public must occur prior to a federal agency making any decision on the proposed action. Depending on the proposed action and the environment in which the action would occur, the impacts assessment process will re require one of the following three different levels of analysis. The first level is a categorical exclusion, also known as a CADEX. This analysis involves those actions that a federal agency has determined do not individually or cumulatively have a significant effect on the quality of the human environment and therefore are categorically excluded from detailed environmental analysis. An example of a CADEX would be for a road or trail construction and repair on existing rights of ways or on previously disturbed areas. Depending on the CADEX used, the Army may be required to prepare a record of environmental consideration that documents that the action has received environmental review. The second level of analysis is an environmental assessment, or EA. This analysis is prepared when there is uncertainty as to whether a proposed project will have significant impacts on the human environment. The impact assessment results in either a finding of no significant impact also known as a FONSI, or a need to prepare an environmental impact statement. If an EA results in a FONSI, the federal agency can make a decision on the proposed action. The third level of analysis is an environmental impact statement, or EIS. A federal agency prepares an EIS for those proposed actions that are anticipated to have a significant impact on the human environment. For implementing the Clinton District Area Development Plan at West Point, the subject of this scoping meeting, the Army has determined it requires an EIS. Compared to an EA, an EIS involves regulatory requirements that are more detailed and rigorous, including public involvement requirements, such as this scoping process, something that is not required for an EA. For an EIS, NEPA requires that a federal agency follow an open and early process to engage and provide other agencies, organizations, Native American tribes, and the public an opportunity to provide input on the range of issues to be addressed in an EIS. The initial phase for public involvement in an EIS is the scoping process, which is intended to inform the public of an agency's proposed action and its intent to prepare an EIS. 
Additionally, a federal agency uses the scoping process to gather input and comments on the proposed action and the scope of the analysis to be addressed in the draft EIS. As part of the scoping process, we are here today for a scoping meeting for the EIS for the proposed implementation of the Clinton District Area Development Plan at West Point. While there are a variety of methods that a federal agency can use to conduct a scoping meeting, due to COVID-19 restrictions, the Army has chosen to conduct a virtual conference call rather than the typical in-person meeting as mentioned earlier. Whether a meeting is virtual or in-person, the goal of a scoping meeting remains the same, and therefore, the purpose of this meeting is to provide information on the EIS process and public involvement opportunities, as well as inform the public of the proposed action. Most importantly, it is to solicit your comments on the proposed action so that your input can assist the Army in determining or further refining the scope of issues for analysis in the EIS. This includes identifying the significant issues that the EIS should focus on and eliminating non-significant issues from further study. As indicated on slide seven of the presentation, there are six general steps of an EIS process, and this scoping meeting falls within step one, project initiation. Step one also includes determining the level of NEPA analysis required, developing the purpose and need for the project, and developing a range of reasonable alternatives for implementing the project. Later, you will hear Ms. Stephanie Shapiro discuss the purpose and need for the Clinton Area District uh, Development Plan and the current range of alternatives to be analyzed in the EEIS. At this point, it is important to note that no impact analysis or decision on the project has been made yet, and to reiterate, the goal for this meeting is for the Army to solicit your comments and input on the project for consideration in preparing the EIS and impacts analysis. Therefore, this meeting is not designed to be a question and answer session. The Army is strictly looking to gather your comments and input for consideration in determining or further refining the scope of issues for analysis. This will then inform steps two and three, data collection and alternatives analysis, respectively. Step two includes identifying any data and source material that can be used, including any required studies such as a cultural resources survey or a wetland delineation. Step two also includes developing the existing conditions section of the EIS, that is to say, the current conditions at West Point without the proposed action. Analyzing the impacts of the proposed action and its alternatives on the existing conditions occurs in step three, as well as identifying any measures to minimize or mitigate those impacts. Step four, distribution of the draft EIS and review once the draft EIS has been completed, the Army will distribute the document to agencies, organizations, Native American tribes, and the public for a 45-day review period. During the public review period, the Army will gather comments on the draft EIS and hold additional public meetings to share the findings of the impact analysis and related mitigation measures. Given COVID-19, at the appropriate time, the Army will decide on the type of public meeting, whether virtual or in-person. The Army will review the comments received during the draft EIS public comment period and consider them when preparing the final EIS, which will include the Army's responses to comments. In step five, finalize the EIS, the Army will identify a preferred or selected alternative in the final EIS and distribute the document to agencies, organizations, Native American tribes, and the public and start a wait or no action period. During a wait or no action period, agencies are required to wait 30 days before making a final decision on a proposed action. Then in step six, decision, following the 30 day wait or no action period, the Army will prepare a record of decision, also known as a ROD, which is a concise summary of its decision based on the alternatives presented in the final EIS. The ROD will state the decision, identify alternatives considered, and identify any mitigation measures it is committing to implement. The ROD will also address any new substantive comments received from review of the final EIS that were not previously addressed and discuss other considerations that influence the decision. A typical schedule for an EIS is two years. The Army began the EIS process for this project on the 9th of October when it issued a notice of intent to prepare an EIS in the Federal Register. 
The notice was also published in local papers, and notification letters were mailed to agencies, organizations, tribes, and the public. And today, we are at the public scoping meeting stage. The Army will accept comments on the project during the 45-day public scoping period, which will end on November 23rd. The Army will then prepare a draft EIS with the anticipated publication of it in the summer of 2021. The public review period for the draft EIS will be 45 days and is also planned for summer 2021. After the review period, the Army will then prepare the final EIS with a planned publication date in fall 2022. Then after the 30-day wait or no action period, the Army will publish its record of decision, which is also planned for fall 2022. As mentioned earlier, the scope of the impact analysis for proposed action depends on the actions themselves and the environment where the proposed action will occur. For the Clinton District Area Development Plan, EIS, the Army has identified land use, air quality and greenhouse gases, noise, geological and soil resources, water resources, biological resources, cultural resources and viewshed, transportation and traffic, utilities, and hazardous and toxic materials and waste as the resource areas to be analyzed in the EIS. The EIS will analyze the impacts to the resource areas, including compliance with relevant regulations, such as the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, and the Endangered Species Act, to name a few examples. Of the resources, resource areas that I just listed, the Army has identified cultural resources as one of the key areas of concerns due to West Point's rich heritage with its nationally recognized National Historic Landmark District and the potential for the proposed action to have significant adverse effects to historic properties, including historic buildings, archaeological sites, landscapes, and view sheds. Because of the potential for significant impacts to historic properties, the Army is required to conduct Section 106 consultation under the National Historic Preservation Act, which requires that a federal agency take into account any effect or potential effect of their undertakings on historic properties listed in or eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places. As a part of the analysis of impacts on cultural resources, and as a part of its Section 106 consultation, the Army will consider all relevant previous agreements to ensure a comprehensive review. The other identified resource area of concern is biological resources due to the presence of protected species such as short nose and Atlantic sturgeon, northern long-eared bat, and bald and golden eagles in the area, and the potential for adverse impacts on these species from in-water work, transportation, and tree removal. Additionally, potential adverse impacts from construction noise and rock removal and transportation and other construction traffic are of key concerns. Now a quick look at the other resource areas that the Army will analyze in the EIS as seen starting on slide 12 of the presentation if you're following along. The Army will analyze land use because some projects may alter or enhance existing recreation opportunities and infrastructure and may invite visitor traffic to get cadet only or residential areas. Air quality and greenhouse gases will be analyzed because West Point is located in an area with air quality concerns and construction, demolition, and some operational activities would produce air emissions and greenhouse gases. Geological and soil resources will be analyzed due to the blasting of rock and the potential requirement to remove rock and soil for construction purposes. Water resources will be analyzed because some of the projects occur within the banks of the Hudson River and others that are close to surface waters will require adherence to stormwater regulations and spill prevention plans. Utilities and hazardous and toxic materials and waste are two other topics that the Army will analyze in the EIS. The former, because the proposed new buildings and facilities will increase demand for electricity and other utilities, and construction and excavation activities could impact aging underground utilities. The latter, because they may be lead or asbestos contamination in older facilities and unexploded ordnance contamination is at a higher likelihood in certain areas of the Clinton District. That was, in a nutshell, the EIS process and the scope of the EIS that the Army has identified coming into today's meeting.
With this scoping meeting today, the Army is following the intent of NEPA to provide an early and open process by which it can determine those issues that need to be identified and addressed. Therefore, the Army is here to solicit your comments and will be listening to what you have to say and, as appropriate, address and incorporate your input into the EIS analysis. Now, without further ado, I will turn the virtual mic over to Ms. Stephanie Shapiro to give you an overview of the proposed action at West Point that is the subject of this EIS. Thank you, Spence. Good afternoon. My name is Stephanie Shapiro, and I'm the Master Planner at West Point, and I'll be giving you an overview of the Clinton District Area Development Plan. Beginning on slide 15 of the presentation, West Point is located along the Hudson River, approximately 50 miles north of New York City. Comprising 16,000 acres, it is home to the United States Military Academy, the Army's preeminent leader development institution. West Point began as a strategic military position during the Revolutionary War, and in 1802, the Military Academy was established. On slide 16, this has a figure of West Point in its entirety and shows that the Clinton District is located along the Hudson River in the northeast corner of the installation. Beginning on slide 17, I will now briefly describe the Clinton District and the development of the Clinton District Area Development Plan. The Clinton District encompasses 395 acres and comprises the main campus of the Military Academy. It is one of six separate districts identified within the West Point Real Property Master Plan, or the RPMP. An RPMP is a roadmap to ensure installation real property supports long-term mission requirements and it addresses the effective long-term management of installation facilities and infrastructure through a co comprehensive and collaborative planning process. The 2017 West Point Real Property Vision Plan provided the garrison with the first two components of the overall RPMP, which were the vision plan and the installation planning standards. The RPMP Vision Framework Plan divided West Point into six identifiable and connected districts based on geographical features, land use patterns, building types, and our transportation networks. For the Clinton District, it is the heart of the historic West Point. It is home to the Military Academy's academic core and contains the majority of the academic, athletic, and waterfront areas on West Point and it includes such prominent areas as Trophy Point, the Plain, Eisenhower Hall, and the West Point Cemetery. As part of the long-range component of the RPMP, Area Development Plans, or ADPs, are prepared for each district identified in the Vision Framework Plan. Focusing on districts allows for the identification of unique needs due to mission, requirements, or command priority changes. As mentioned, the Clinton District is the heart of historic West Point, and it is the most sensitive area of the garrison due to its location within the U.S. Military Academy National Historic Landmark District. The Clinton District encompasses significant historic buildings and structures, archaeological sites, and historic landscapes. The Clinton District ADP was developed through an internal stakeholder-driven planning process and it identifies short, mid, and long-range projects that emphasize the specific needs of those living and or working within the Clinton District. I'm now on slide 19 and 20. As mentioned, the proposed action is to implement the Clinton District ADP at West Point. The ADP comprises 28 projects that fall within three different time frames. Short range, which is one to five years, mid range, 6 to 15 years, and long range, 16 to 20 years. Short range projects focus mainly on outdoor and recreational improvements. The mid range plan primarily comprises transportation projects, and additional connection and improvement projects occur in the long range plan. Later, I will, I will provide a brief description of each project. Now, to discuss the reason for the Army's proposed action. As seen on slide 21 of the presentation, the purpose for implementing the ADP and the projects contained within it is to allow improvements and effective long-term management of installation facilities and infrastructure within the Clinton District. These projects are needed so that the Military Academy 
can continue improving its infrastructure while observing the constraints of its physical location and protecting its cultural and natural resources. The ADP includes several projects that are to be built, renovated, or reorganized to meet the needs of providing modern structures for the training of its core cadets as future leaders. The proposed action would also allow West Point to balance a military and collegiate feel with a pedestrian-centric design that provides connected, accessible facilities and spaces with modern, reliable infrastructure, achieving three planning goals of the Clinton District ADP. As I mentioned earlier, the ADP includes short, mid, and long-range projects. These projects are at different stages of development, with some currently ongoing and others only at a conceptual stage. The level of analysis in the EIS will depend on the project's developmental stage. In the EIS, projects that are further along in development will be evaluated in detail, while projects at a conceptual stage will be evaluated at a programmatic level. For those potential future development opportunities evaluated in the EIS at a programmatic level, Army Garrison West Point will ensure that appropriate NEPA reviews are completed when each project reaches the stage appropriate for specific decision making. Additionally, four of the Clinton District ADP projects have already had NEPA documentation completed on them and a FONSI, or Record of Environmental Consideration sign. Therefore, those projects those four projects do not need new impact analyses conducted on them. However, because they are a part of the Clinton District ADP, the EIS will incorporate summaries of their prior approved NEPA analyses. The EIS will analyze three alternatives, two action alternatives and the no action alternative. Alternative one, which is the preferred alternative, would fully implement the Clinton District ADP and all of the projects contained within it. Alternative two would implement Clinton District ADP, but without the project revitalization of Trophy Point and the Humanities Center. In addition to the two action alternatives, the EIS will also analyze the no action alternative. Under the no action alternative, the Army would not implement the projects identified in the Clinton District ADP for which prior NEPA documentation has not been completed. In other words, none of the 28 projects identified in the Clinton District ADP would be implemented except for the four projects for which NEPA documentation has already been completed and approved through the signing of a FONSI or a Record of Environmental Consideration. I will now be followed by Chris Prey, who will kick us off by providing brief descriptions of the projects in the Clinton District ADP, starting on slide 24 with the short-range projects. Thank you, Stephanie. First are the short-range projects, those that would occur within zero to five years. The four Clinton District ADP projects with prior approved NEPA analysis are among the short-range projects. Project A would create a two-acre park near Lee Gate for community use. It would incorporate play and picnic space, as well as sanitary facilities, and would be Americans with Disability Act compliant. Project B would create a multi-purpose trail to facilitate cadet and public movement from the Lee housing area to the Target Hill athletic fields. Project C would build a wastewater treatment plant to replace the existing Target Hill treatment plant and increase treatment capacity from the current 2.06 million gallons per day to 2.3 million gallons per day to meet current and future needs. The Army has already completed an environmental assessment for this project and signed a finding of no significant impact. The original plan was for the new plant to be located adjacent to the existing facility Operations at the existing facility would have been maintained through the construction phase and then demolished after the successful startup of the new facility. The proposed area associated with the new wastewater treatment plant was to be the currently utilized athletic fields. In 2020, the operation of the wastewater treatment plant was contracted to American Waters, and the contractor is revisiting the design to consider a smaller footprint with reuse and upgrade of existing features. Project D would construct a trail network above Target Hill Field to join the cemetery, Lee CDC, and the old PX areas to facilitate 
to facilities at Target Hill Field, taking advantage of scenic viewpoints and paralleling the cascade of Crow's Nest Brook as it flows from Lee Housing to the athletic fields. The trails would include picnic and resting areas. Project E would expand the historic West Point Cemetery in two phases over the next 50 to 75 years. The first phase is currently underway and includes the removal of an existing gas station and holding tanks to provide space for the cemetery expansion. Some of the parking from Building 683, the former PX facility, would be lost in this expansion. The expansion also includes two buildings for maintenance and storage. In the future phase, Building 683 would potentially be demolished to provide additional space for the cemetery. Both phases correspond with the original plan and design of the Olmsted Brothers landscape design firm. The Army has completed an EA for this project and signed a finding of no significant impact. Project F would renovate Fire Station 1 and modernize and expand the existing USMA Fire Station to serve as a two-company headquarters fire station. It is needed to provide adequate services for the cadet area of the military academy and adequate space for the fire departmental headquarters operations. Project G would expand Gillis Fieldhouse on the southeast side for additional athletic programs. A secondary equipment strength and training athletic support facility would be developed at the field house. The expansion would be a two-story addition with a maximum building area of approximately 12,000 square feet. Project H would renovate North Dock, which includes a helipad, small park with seating, and parking spaces. The dock is structurally deficient with separations and gaps developing in the sheet piling and areas of collapse in the decking as fill has leaked past the sheet piling into the river. Currently, the helipad is unusable due to a large sinkhole. The project would enclose the entire bulkhead and helipad in new sheet pile and grout structure, anchor to the bedrock through the existing dock, and make repairs to the riprap adjacent. The record, a record of environmental consideration using a categorical exclusion has been completed for this action. West Point is currently finalizing the design and seeking the necessary permits for construction. Project I would renovate Trophy Point Amphitheater to modernize the amphitheater to resolve health and safety issues. It would upgrade infrastructure and stage equipment, walkways, lighting, railings, and electrical service to support visitor, the visitor experience. It would also enhance views to the Hudson River and frame views across the plain to Washington Hall. It would create, it would create pedestrian connections to Fair Walk and surrounding amenities, enhance the park setting around Trophy Point and cultivate a natural landscape within its zone. Project J is to revitalize Trophy Point with a humanities center. This project would build an approximately 31,000 square foot humanities center into the hillside overlooking the Hudson River on Trophy Point. The center would correspond with adjacent Trophy Point pedestrian and landscape improvements. The new facility would support West Point faculty and cadet research, encourage interdisciplinary partnerships, and foster innovation. Within the center, gallery spaces, classrooms, and a multi-use theater would provide West Point a landmark facility for various public and private functions. The building would be a cast-in-place concrete two-story structure on two below-grade levels with a steel-supported grass-covered roof and a house a 200 theater a 200-person theater, exhibition space, a cafe, a gift shop on cellar level one, and conference rooms, meeting rooms, and administrator offices, and a mechanical space on cellar level two. Project K would create an approximately one-third acre outdoor classroom and meeting space with seating surrounding, uh, with seating surrounding a central area for lectures and debates. Landscaping would be naturalistic with plantings and hardscapes designed to create a private space. Project L would renovate approximately 124,000 square feet of Arvin Gym with the possibility of expanding Crandall Pool to an Olympic size by building into the adjacent parking lot. I will now hand over the rest of this presentation to Stephanie Shapiro, who will take us through the remaining projects to slide 27. Thank you, Chris. Project M would build a retractable roof over the superintendent's box on the parade field viewing area. Project N at the old Fort Clinton area proposes to enhance recreation along the fort waterfront by creating seating and picnic space. Project O is the new Cyber and Engineering Academic Center, or SEAC, 
with a parking structure on the lower levels. The SEAC provides modern classrooms, laboratories, and technology to support cadet engineering education. Additional outdoor gathering spaces, landscaping, and other pedestrian amenities would be included in the project. Upon completion, all of Thayer Road would be converted to a pedestrian thoroughfare. The Army has completed an EA for the project and signed a finding of no significant impact. Project P would renovate South Dock with Harbor Master House. This project would demol demolish the existing Harbor Master office, the dock, wharf, and pilings, and replace them with a flood elevated Harbor Master office building, a new L shaped dock, and new wharf. Additionally, the design would encompass three options for vessel accommodation, ranging from 400 long tons to 1,200 long tons. The larger vessel accommodation would allow Coast Guard icebreakers to dock at West Point for emergencies. On slide 28, Project Q would improve the historic walking trail between Central Area and South Dock. Project R would relocate the Yacht Club that is currently located just north of South Dock. Pending the implementation of published plans by the village of Highland Falls to revitalize and redevelop its waterfront, West Point would explore mutually beneficial partnerships for hosting the West Point Yacht Club at the village-owned marina. Beginning on slide 29 are the mid-range projects that would occur within 6 to 15 years. Project S consolidates parking near the Uniform Factory and Band Building to improve parking capacity and traffic flow. For Boardwalk Phase 1, Project T will construct a boardwalk along the Hudson River shoreline connecting Southville and Fl Flirtation Walk. Project U would build an elevated loading dock behind Washington Hall to provide truck access from above at Derussi Road, improving delivery logistics. Project V, the Davis-Washington building connection, would construct an enclosed walkway connection between Davis Barracks and Washington Hall. Project W would construct a bypass road from the lower South Dock area to Trophy Point. This would allow West Point to restrict unauthorized vehicle traffic along Cullum Road and enhance security of the main campus area. Lastly are the long-range projects that would occur between 16 to 20 years. Project X would renovate Eisenhower Hall, which is approximately 137,000 square feet, to provide a more centralized location for cadet clubs, as well as mechanical, electrical, life health safety, and ADA upgrades. Boardwalk Phase 2, which is Project Y, would continue the Phase 1 work under Project T by constructing the riverfront walkway connecting Flirtation Walk to Ordnance Compound. Project Z would build an approximately 2,500 square foot connection between buildings 603 and 607 to create year-round thoroughfares and collaboration spaces. Following the development of a bypass road under Project W, Project AA, would convert Column Road to a pedestrian thoroughfare. Project AB would build an approximately 9,000 square foot cadet union between Building 600 and Building 752 Mahan Hall. I'm now on slides 31 and 32. That was a brief description of the 28 projects proposed in the Clinton District ADP. On slides 31 and 32, that shows figures of the north and south areas of the Clinton District with the location of the 28 projects depicted on them. On slide 33, as mentioned earlier, the significant impacts associated with implementing the ADP are mostly related to the revitalization of Trophy Point with the approximately 31,000 square foot Humanity Center. The Humanity Center would correspond with the adjacent Trophy Point pedestrian and landscape improvements, support USMA faculty and cadet research, encourage interdisciplinary partnerships and foster innovation, include gallery spaces, classrooms, and a multi-use theater, and provide the United States Army Garrison West Point with a landmark facility for various public and private functions. Now I will hand the virtual mic back to Brittany Keim from WSP. Good afternoon again. We recognize that that was a lot of information in a verbal format. 
So I'd like to remind you that a copy of this presentation and other scoping materials that describe the proposed action and the individual projects within the ADP is available online by going to the website indicated in the newspaper notices. The same website is also indicated on slide 34, the last slide of the presentation, if you are following along. As mentioned earlier, we are collecting your comments via several different avenues. You can write your comments to us today during this conference call. You can mail your comments to West Point, or you can email your comments to westpointclinton adp eis at usace.army.mil. Again, that email address is westpointclinton adp eis at usace.army.mil. The mailing and email, email addresses where you can send your comment are provided on the last slide of this presentation, in the newspaper articles, as well as on the website and in all of the scoping materials. The website is also where we will publish the draft EIS for viewing and downloading, as well as other documents produced as a part of this project when they become available. Therefore, you will likely want to bookmark or otherwise write down the website address for future easy access. I would like to say again how much we appreciate your attendance today. We view compliance with state and federal environmental regulations as an opportunity to learn about the public's interests and concerns about the proposed action and to do so early enough in the process so that we can address any concerns and consider them in the decision-making process. This is your formal opportunity to learn about the proposed action and comment on it. We are especially interested in hearing any of your concerns or issues related to the proposed action that you might have. This will assist the Army with refining the areas of focus as it prepares the EIS. Issues that are important to you are important to the Army as well. There are no issues too inconsequential for us to consider. So sharing your concerns with us will allow us to address them during preparation of the EIS and will allow us to make sure your concerns are taken into account. With that, we will now start the verbal comment session today. As previously mentioned, in a few minutes, we will open the telephone lines and I will be calling on you um, to provide your comments. The order in which I call on you will be the order in which you have indicated you will be providing your comments. If you did not indicate you wanted to provide a comment when you called in, but would like to do so now, you are welcome to do so by pressing star three. Once you have pressed star three, you will be asked to provide your name and we will enter you into the comment queue. When I call upon you, I will unmute your phone so that you can make your statement. Please keep in mind that we want to hear from everyone during this call. So we ask that you limit your verbal comments to three minutes apiece. Comments that would require more than three minutes may be submitted in writing. Written comments can be as lengthy as you wish. Before we start receiving comments, I would once again like to remind you that this meeting is a scoping meeting. And as such, the goal for, is for the Army to receive your comments. It is not designed as a question and answer session. Therefore, your comments or questions will not be addressed today. Instead, your comments will be recorded, transcribed, and as appropriate, addressed and incorporated into the draft EIS. We will get started as soon as we have our first caller in the queue. Again, if you would like to provide a verbal comment, you are welcome to indicate you would like to do so by pressing star three on your phone. Again, we wanna thank everyone for joining us today. Um, we're really happy to have you receive this information and um, learn more about the project. Uh, as mentioned, you can find more information on the project website, which was listed in all the newspaper notices. If you are also following along and you have access to a computer, you can go to access.live backslash WP Clinton ADPEIS, um, and you'll be able to put in a comment in writing as well as see our presentation. And we are currently showing a slide that shows all the ways that you can provide your comments 
uh, if you do not want to provide a verbal comment today, but would prefer to submit one in writing. Once again, if you would like to provide your verbal comment on this call, please press star three and you'll be connected to an operator who will put you in our comment queue line. All right, it looks like our first caller today is Sherman. Sherman with the last four digits of your phone number, 7408. Sherman, you should be live on the line and can provide your comments. Okay, thank you. Sherman Flake, Command Historian. My comment is reference to uh, Project J, Humanity Center, often called the link. As the historian here, I'm, of course, responsible for telling the story and the history of the Academy, the Revolution, and so on. Um, down below the historic plain and where the Humanities Center uh, is scheduled to go in, uh, the most historic point on West Point um, <clears throat> is all these engravings and historical aspects associated with the, the old um, ammunition trail now called flirtation walk by, you know, several generations of cadets. There are engravings of battles from the Mexican War, from the Revolution, that um, <clears throat> I feel or believe could be threatened if there's a lot of work and construction and dirt moving and hauling in that area down, down there, and also just the whole layout and design of Trophy Point. That is my... Um, concern. I've voiced that with the chain of command here so they know how I feel about this. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. It will be recorded, transcribed, and is appropriate addressed in the draft EIS. Next, next up, it looks like we have Betsy with the last four digits one four zero zero. Betsy, you yes. should be live on the line. Thank you. I'm Dr. Betsy Blakesley. I am the president of the Friends of the American Revolution at West Point, an approved 501c3 for the past 10 years by the U.S. Army Garrison at West Point. There, are, my comments include concerns about H. And why I'd like to mirror Sherman Fleek's concerns. There are approximately eight historic entities from the American Revolution that will be affected by this plan um, within the area that they have discussed, putting recreation tables and chairs, etc. So essentially what is going to occur is that these sites, which are indeed memorials to the American soldiers who fought against the British in the American Revolution, are going to be disrupted, which is a concern. I am in charge of an organization that is currently in the process of raising $12 million in partnership with the Center for Military History in Washington, D.C., to stabilize the over 30 historic sites from the American Revolution here at West Point. And I um, would, and that is something that the U.S. Army has indicated that they will consider for the Army's presentation to the 250th birthday of the U.S. Army and the, and the um, American Revolution, which is coming up in 2025. We have comprehensive plans. We have had innumerable um, conversations and meetings with the U.S. Army Garrison at West Point and six of the past garrison commanders. This is a project that is moving forward. There has to be consideration for not only the archaeological sites at West Point under the ground, but the ones that are still existing. And I would request that we would do a very careful analysis of what these particular plans in this area are going to do. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate your comment. It will be transcribed and addressed as appropriate in the draft EIS. All right, once again, if you would like to provide a verbal comment on the line today, you can do so by pressing star three. When you press star three, you'll be connected to an operator who will place you in our comment queue. You can also submit your comments in writing um, and all the ways in which you can do that are included on the final slide of our presentation. As I mentioned, I see we have a couple people who are getting teed up to provide their comments. I will be calling on you shortly. Uh, if others would like to get in line for a comment, please press star three. All right, it looks like we have Jeffrey with the last four digits of the phone number 6566. You should be live on the line to provide your comment, Jeffrey. Thank you, good afternoon. My name is Jeffrey Anzavino. Director of, Director of Land Use Advocacy for Scenic Hudson. And I'd like to make sure that the EIS includes a complete visual assessment with visual simulations of all the projects as viewed from various locations on the Hudson River and uh, other points within the Hudson Highlands scenic area of statewide significance. All right. Thank you for your comment. As mentioned, it will be transcribed um, and is appropriate addressed in the draft EIS. Again, if you, if, if you would like to provide your comments, you can do so verbally by pressing star three. We'll connect you with an operator uh, who will put you in the queue to provide your comment. You can also provide them in writing via email. The email address is westpointclinton-adpeis at usace.army.mil. It looks like we have our next caller ready to go. Um, Jim with the last four digits, 7762. You should be live on the line to present your comment. Yes, this is Colonel Retired Jim Johnson. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, great. I'm the vice president of the organization that Dr. Blakesley was describing, the Friends of the American Revolution at West Point. I'm also the executive director of the Hudson River Valley Institute at Marist College and the military historian for the Hudson River Valley National Heritage Area. My comment would be that we need to protect the American revolutionary fortifications that are in the Clinton area. And I would hope that we could add their preservation to the projects list. In other words, we need to preserve Fort Clinton. We need to be able to interpret Sherburn's readout. We need to make sure that we can preserve the water batteries along uh, chain battery, uh, the, the ammunition route, chain battery, flirtation walk area. So to me, these are vital projects that need to be added to the projects list so that we're then prepared not only for the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution starting in 2025, but also for the future as we educate cadets about their heritage from the American Revolution and even with the carvings that are on flirtation walk from the Mexican War. So they're just all kinds of important pieces of our heritage which are in the area that we're describing here near Trophy Point and uh, around to Fort Clinton, Kosciuszko's Monument, et cetera. So I think that the, these various fortifications are so important, they, needed to be, they need to actually be on the list as a project to be funded for preservation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your comment will be recorded, transcribed, and as appropriate, addressed and incorporated in the draft EIS. We appreciate everyone's time and comments here today. 
Again, if you'd like to provide a verbal comment and you haven't um, indicated you would like to do so, please do so now by pressing star three. Um, once you've pressed star three, you'll be connected to an operator who will uh, place you in our verbal queue so that you can be called upon to provide your comment. Again, we will be keeping um, this meeting going and stay live on the line uh, for the next hour so that people can provide comments as needed. And you can do so by pressing star three on your phone at any time. Um, our presentation portion has concluded and we will be leaving the line open for comments for the next hour. If you would like to submit a comment in writing, you may do so via email or by mail. You can email your comments to westpointclinton-abpeis at, at usace.army.mil, or you can press star three now, and uh, we will connect you to an operator who will put you in the verbal queue, um, and you'll be able to provide that comment on the line. We are now two meetings ahead, uh, or two minutes ahead of our meeting in time. I would like to remind you that you can submit your comments in writing via email to westpointclinton-adpeis at usace.army.mil. We so appreciate you joining us today for this public scoping meeting, and we look forward to incorporating your comments uh, into the draft EIS. We will also be hosting another scoping meeting this evening at 6 p.m. and we hope you can join us there. The call in details are the same as this meeting. Once again, thank you for joining. We appreciate your time.